Hey everyone, Trey Amick from Magnet Forensics here. Today I'm going to be talking about spotlight metadata and extended attributes and how they can be vital to your investigation, whether you're in the government or the corporate sector. I can honestly tell you I've used these little forensic nuggets in both my criminal investigation as well as my corporate investigations throughout my career. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what we've got going on here in Axiom. So here you can see I have an APFS volume already processed inside of Axiom, but I want to double check to see what version of the Mac OS build I'm running. I believe this is 10.15 or Catalina, which is Apple's latest Mac OS, but I want to double check that. So let's go ahead and move from our case dashboard on over to our file system. And to check on what system I have, I'm just going to do a quick search by typing in system version. So now that you can see we have a couple plists that have been highlighted here and the first one i'm going to look at is the system version plist i'm going to go ahead and expand out this plist and here you can see we are in fact running 1015 which is mac os uh, latest version which is catalina but what's also interesting here is we get the product build for this specific version of the os but we also have a separate plist here with the previous system version so if we select that and expand this out as well we can see what we upgraded from. So before we upgraded to 1015, we were in fact running 1014.4. So it gives us a little bit of that historical context for this investigation as well. So now that we've confirmed what version of Mac OS we are running, let's go ahead and look at some of this Mac Spotlight metadata and these extended attributes. I'm gonna go ahead and clear this filter. Now, one thing to note about Mac OS 1015 is that we actually have a new volume. On the left-hand side here, we have a couple that are listed. We have Docs, which is one that I created. We have Mac HD, we have Mac HD hyphen data. The new Mac OS 1015, you should see Macintosh HD hyphen data and Macintosh HD now. But we're gonna focus in on Macintosh HD uh, hyphen data because that's gonna be where that user profile is. And for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and navigate down to our suspects down folder so we're gonna go on down to users Dante and then we're gonna go ahead and select his downloads folder one thing that's important to note when you're working through the file tree on the left hand side here and you're not seeing everything in the center that you would expect to see when you would select one of these folders make sure you uh, toggle between all subfolders or just selected folder that's gonna make a really big difference when you're digging in using the file tree inside of axiom so just kind of keep that in mind I typically like leaving all subfolders on just to make Make life a little bit easier for me so I don't have to keep digging uh, down through the file tree. One thing I would also want to note is here at the top you can actually see we have created uh, breadcrumbing now so you can actually dig back and forth as you're moving through the file tree so it just gives you a little bit more flexibility in terms of where you're at in your investigation and if you need to quickly jump between one folder and another. So for this investigation, I'm going to go ahead and let's say we're looking through this downloads folder and we come across this img0094.mov. So let's take a look at that. And I'm gonna go ahead and break out this panel so that we can really get a good view of what's going on here. And if we hit play, you can see it looks like there's a video at a club or a bar. But let's see what we can see in terms of the metadata. And when we look at the details panel here, we can see we have a .mov extension, which we already knew by the file name. We get some basic information from created, access, modified, and we also get date added along with MD5 hash. All good information, but I feel like there could be potentially a lot more information that we could have uh, about this file. Now that we've looked at the details panel and uh, ran a quick preview of what this video was, let's go ahead and keep scrolling down. And as you can see, we have the text and hex, which is typical of any forensic platform at this point. Uh, but we also have this new field, this APFS metadata. Let's expand that out. Let's kind of walk through some of this. So here you can see we have the spotlight attributes broken out and we can see things such as this is uh, labeled as a QuickTime movie. We can see the, obviously the KMD item kind, which is once again, a QuickTime movie. We can see when this date was added. So we're getting additional timestamps now that we can parse out that spotlight metadata. And we can see this was added on April 26, 2019. We get the logical size here. We can see the display name. We also get the media type, so we know this has video and sound as well. If we keep going down, we can see uh, we have you know the duration, so six and a half seconds. We can see the profile name of HD and that it was uh, uh, recorded in 1080. We can also now, we're getting some really good uh, pieces here. We can see the KMD item where from. So we can see Dante Grimes, Dante's iPhone 6S. So now we know that this video was shot on iPhone 6S. We can also see the Latin long so we now have GPS coordinates that can go along with this. 
And as we keep going down, we can also now start to attribute where this video came from and how it got on the system. Cause that's, what's really key about this is as forensic investigators, we want to tell the story of a file and how it moved onto our system and potentially off our system. And here you can see KMD item user shared receiver transport is com.apple.airdrop. So it looks like this file was airdropped to this computer. We can also see the handle. So now we have a separate iCloud account for Dante Grimes, and you can see when that information was shared along with the sender handle and the uh, receiver and sender names. So some really good information in there that can be absolutely critical for your investigation. It'd be that you need to prove that they were in possession of a particular file, but how it got on their system. And this is gonna be where you're gonna wanna look for that information. If we keep going down, we can see extended attributes here. And we have the com.apple metadata, the KMD itemware froms, and we have the com.apple quarantine. And if we select either of these, these are just gonna be simple links. And when we do that, we can see here, we can break out that information. So we can see it was shared via sharing D, which is typically gonna be airdrop. But what's important too, if you note here, we have this. Now this is going to actually be the quarantine event identifier for this file, which is absolutely key. When a file is transferred onto the system, it's going to go into the quarantine events database. Now we have the actual identifier for it in that database, so we can cross-reference it to make sure it is in fact there and confirm the timestamps of when it hit that quarantine database. So let's go ahead and do that now. So let's remember 4FF for our quarantine identifier. I'm going to hit OK here. And let's go ahead and see if we can uh, find that file when we hop over to the artifacts view. We actually have a specific artifact designed for the quarantine events database down here on the quarantine files. And let's go ahead, I'm just gonna sort on application. And since we know it said sharing D, now we've uh, found all of our sharing D pieces. And sure enough, when we look here, we can see here's the 4FF that we were looking for. We can see the quarantine date, which is 426, 2019, 638. And when we start looking here, when we start scrolling over, we can see sure enough, there's the sender's name information and we can get some really good information that way. So definitely keep that in mind when you are looking at these different uh, pieces of evidence and where you can cross reference that to really lock in your information. So let's go ahead, since this is important, let's go ahead and add a tag here because we're gonna wanna add that to our report. From here, let's go ahead and go right back over to file system view. So we've looked at this file, we've identified where it came from, and we've identified that it is in the quarantine events database. So let's go ahead and just bookmark this file. This could be important for our investigation. Next, let's look at a, another file here. We're, we're looking through his downloads folder and we get down to a torrent uh, that might have piqued my interest. And I wanna get a little bit more information about this. So let's go ahead and expand this window out once again. Here you can see we get a quick preview, kind of the breakdown of what's going on inside of that torrent. And when we look at the details panel here, once again, we can get the logical size, we get the file extension. Based on the file name, we can see it's probably gonna be Kali Linux and a build of that with inside of a VM. But let's go and see what, what else we can find here. Now, if we go down to the APFS metadata, we can see we do have some really good information here. We have the date added, so we know when this hit the system. We can keep on going down. We get the display name. So once again, it's a seven zip of Kali Linux uh, that's in a VM. But more importantly now, we can see the where froms, the KMD item where froms. This is critical. You can get the absolute URL of where this was downloaded from, which can be key when you're really trying to show you know, how the file got to the system. If we look down a little bit further, we get some more extended attributes here. And if I open these up, start with the com.apple.quarantine, we can see that it looks like the application Opera was what was used to download this. And then just like before in the last file, we had that quarantine event ID that we can cross reference here as well. So we can see this is 5FF. So we can go ahead and double check that as well. But before we do that, let's go ahead and look at the com.apple metadata where froms. And when we look here, sure enough, that binary P list, we can see here's that URL that we've already parsed out, but we can show you that raw data so you can confirm that on your own. And when you highlight it, obviously you get the ASCII down at the bottom for the decode. But since we've already looked at this information uh, here, let's go ahead and just confirm in the quarantine events database that this was in fact, uh, you know, downloaded and added into that database. So we've looked at the com.apple quarantine, we looked at the where from. So let's go ahead and just confirm once again, like we did last time, uh, by jumping over to our artifact view and looking in that quarantine events database that this file is in fact there and that the quarantine events database is showing the same information that we saw here. So I'm gonna go ahead and collapse this window. 
Here you can see we've once again already sorted and we are on our Opera artifacts uh, that are being downloaded from Opera. Here once again you can see there's the quarantine file identifier with the 5FF and as we look to the right since I've selected it you can see the package name, you get the file identifier, here's the download URL and the original origin of this file. So now we can really explain exactly they used Opera to navigate to this uh, you know, file path, they downloaded the file, and that's where it was residing inside of his downloads folder when we found it. Keep in mind when you are working these investigations, if someone is using a mixed environment where they're using both Mac and Windows, if they happen to move some of these files from the Mac environment over to an NTFS or FAT volume, a lot of this really good metadata is going to be stripped off because NTFS and FAT don't really understand what these KMD itemware froms and those different types of pieces like that, what they are you know for. So they just strip those off of the files. So just kind of keep that in mind. If though the suspect is in a mostly Mac environment where they have an iPad and a Mac and an iPhone and they're moving files back and forth very easily, a lot of this metadata will stay appended as it's moving across the platform. So it's really good to be able to track that information and as it's being moved, being able to identify you know potentially where all it's been been uh, for your investigation. Hopefully this helps. Uh, once again, thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.